are you doing? I am good. How are you? Are you oh. are you doing anything next week for Valentine's Day? I don't know. I mean, nothing like major planned or anything like that. Might go to dinner or something. You know, probably not on Valentine's Day because right the worst day to go anywhere. It is. It's like New um, Year's Day. It's like the same dinner costs triple for no reason. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and the lines are crazy. Though I remember years ago, I had a, a date for Valentine's Day, and I, I mean, he made a reservation and everything. We get there. We waited for over an hour and a half just to sit down at the table with a reservation. Right. And I thought, you know, um, that was the last year I went to dinner for Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's like, I'll even break down and cook or order something. Anything will happen, but not that. Anything. Anything. Anything trying to be out <laughs> that exactly. day. The day before? The day after? Yeah, that's great. <laughs> so... Anyways. even the day before because now it's on a Monday so whenever it's on a Monday like Friday uh, Saturday and Sunday are going to kind of be crazy because people are going to do the whole weekend of but Sunday Super Bowl Sunday so it's very weird that they have Super Bowl mm-hmm. Sunday the day before Valentine's Day because no man's gonna <laughs> want to miss the Super Bowl trying that's like yeah. the one time if you want to go out that would be the time to go yeah. out because everybody's going to be watching the game the Super Bowl, yeah. Yeah. Yep. that's a good point that's yep. a good point so Anyways, anyways, but, but I figured yeah. in case you were busy next week, we should do the Valentine's talk this week because at least people yeah. have time to implement some sort of some advice. For Valentine's. Yeah. yeah. Now in your practice, you know, you're a chiropractor. Do you get a lot of pelvic pain or people who come to you because they can't, do they even connect that maybe there's something that a chiropractor could adjust in their sexual function or is, is, is that not something you hear very often? Mm, not really. I mean, I think when, when I hear that, it's more people coming and talking about nutrition, functional medicine. Okay. That's the direction they're going more than chiropractic. Now, um, I always do explain, obviously, the nerve connection. And there, if there is nerve interference, that could absolutely affect, potentially, you know, those functions. It's not necessarily, um, it's usually a pretty serious thing if they're having issues with that because of nerve Oh yeah. It's it's more of a back problem, like a big, you know, to do. And it could be, it could be something really serious because it could be something affecting like the spinal cord or, you know, beyond just back pain. Right. So, um, but no, I don't really have people necessarily. No, not really. Or even like pelvic issues. Like what if they had like a symphysis pubis, like they had a baby and now their symphysis pubis is in pain and now everything, you know, things hurt. Yes. That definitely can be a possibility. And, you know, there is a way to adjust that. I usually use my activator for that. And, um, but yeah, that definitely can get a little bit out of alignment because there's a joint there, especially people that have had yes. babies. But I've actually had people that just from sitting, like I had one girl, she was sitting, um, she was playing on her, like a, not, not a piano, but a uh, keyboard. And she had the keyboard sitting on her bed and she had her legs like open, like, a V stretch, right? But she had them and then she started, she was kind of rotated and she felt it kind of move. And it, it literally got her pubic symphysis a little bit out of alignment enough that she was having all kinds of pain down there. Of course, that was radiating around. Um, so it can happen just from sitting in a funky position for too long that you need an adjustment in that area. Like so. regularly or one time? Because I mean, I could see how a baby, like one of my friends just happened to say, oh, I can't do certain exercises because it hurts right there. And I'm like, oh, did you happen to have big babies? And she's like, oh yeah, they were both over eight pounds. I'm like, that'll do it. I was like, because they'll widen that joint and then it will never quite snap back. And then it's cartilage. It's really hard to manage cartilage. And there's not like mm-hmm. a real joint there. Like the orthopedic surgeon's not going to go do a replacement on that like your hip and your knee sure but your symphysis pubis like nobody really operates there even not a gynecologist like we don't do right. bones and the orthopedic right. surgeon is like eh, you know no so I'm like you kind of are you know and then pelvic floor therapy hurts and so I was just like yeah I didn't know if you had something to offer that maybe other people didn't because they do have pelvic floor therapy for it and she wasn't impressed with that <laughs> I was just like, huh, I was like, that, that's an interesting thing because when I'm treating people, you know, we're supposed to be talking about oils and romance and whatever, but when I, when people come to see me for decreased libido, and that's a lot of people because menopause, that's a, it's a epidemic during menopause that your sex drive has gotten away from you. But the first thing I ask them is, is it uncomfortable? I can give you the best sex drive in the world, but if it really, really hurts, that's just not going to do, you know, I have to stop right the discomfort. I mean, are you dry? And 
did you have a baby and has it hurt since then and is there scar tissue Mm -hmm. you mentioned people don't do surgery but it can be adjusted and that's why i say that girl that one patient i had she hadn't even had a baby but it was just really interesting it's like it was and it and so usually if you rub your like your fingers along that bony area Uh um it just feels like bones but if there's a lot of tenderness it could be that there's an alignment that needs to happen you know adjustment that needs to be happening so um so that is you know it can be adjusted that area can you see that like do you get x-rays on people or you just have to feel it and you just know it's there no it's more i mean that's a good, I mean, I've never really x-rayed it. Usually I just tell people when they're laying on their back, just say, rub your finger across, you know, your hand across that area and tell me if it feels uncomfortable. Like, obviously, um, it's like, if they can do that and feel it's like, okay, it feels like two bones down there. Is it tender? Is it hurting? Is there, you know, is there, is there like tenderness in that area? And they'll tell me. And um, usually if it is, I mean, it's a pretty quick adjustment. If it's not, then it's like, there's nothing really going on there. So um, I mean, I shouldn't say nothing. It's possible. There still could be something going on, but usually it'll be tender to the touch mm-hmm. if they're a little bit out of, just because everything's a little bit out of whack. Right. Not yeah. Lined up the way it's supposed to be. So. Yeah. So, so, so people who don't know what the symphysis pubis is, it's like the front of your pelvic bone, like right under where your vulva is, like where all the right above your clitoris, basically, if you touch right above your clitoris, that's where your symphysis pubis is. And when you have a baby, it, it's not a joint that has, that can snap back or give once you've widened it, it's kind of wide. <laughs> it either yeah. snaps back by itself, but it's really, you know, it's like not an easy thing. You know, once it gets disrupted, depending on how you, your weight and how you're walking, it could not go back into place if you aren't properly aligned anyway. Right, right. Right. Yeah. And that's why, that's why I tell people too, when they're pregnant, it's always good to be under consistent chiropractic care to keep things lined up and things moving the way they're supposed to be moving. So when they are having the baby, everything just opens the way it's supposed to, right? Versus right. Because, <laughs> a little bit off. Because you never think that having a baby early in life is going to impact your sexual function late in life. So, Later. and, and pain has a big, it's a big component to people wanting to have sex. If it doesn't hurt, well, you could still have a lack of want of desire. And that's actually not difficult for me to address if you just have a plain lack of desire. But if you have pain plus a lack of desire, or you decided to stop liking sex because it hurt anyway, I'm like, that's a whole different loop that I have to get through. Now, what about the sacroiliac joint? Do you do a lot of adjustments to that? Yeah, that's a pretty common area to get out of alignment too. And usually you'll feel that kind of, it's not really like a sciatic type pain in your booty, but it's like kind of a low back, but it's a little bit more, a little lower than the low back lateral. You know, you feel it across that area. They feel it across the low back. They can sometimes feel it up into that area. Um, Yeah, that's a pretty common joint to adjust. Now, common area, I should say. Mm -hmm. um, Does that have a lot, do they complain of, sexual dysfunction a lot when you hear I mean I know a lot of people walking and Um, it feels you know but otherwise you know I don't know I don't get a lot of that in sexual I don't really have you don't ask them like I said even yeah it's not that I don't ask them it's usually though it's they're more the pain is the bigger issue because they're walking than anything else right that's like the big thing that they're just dealing with right and then um of course if they're in pain that's going to potentially affect you know the other the other things, you know, like, like you know, obviously, if they've got a lot of back pain, they're not going to want to be going and right sex at all. <laughs> they're because they're in pain. Yeah, so, pain is pain, right? Yeah, yeah, because it's not like the first complaint. I mean, that right. would be like a, one of the lists of complaints that they get. But like one of the other complaints, it's like, well, I can't reach around to wipe myself. You know, <laughs> right. my back pain is like that. So you know, having sex is like down the list a little bit when they've got that much back pain you know what I'm saying right no because when they come to me they're going to lead with the I can't have sex part when they go to you they're going to lead with the I can't walk part even though they're both there I'm going to hear the sex part they know I can't fix their ability to walk but you can and so they're not going to tell you about the sex because what do you you know why are they going to tell you but they're connected right that's why I was asking like if there's if I know there's something you can do I'll be like oh yeah go yeah so I mean that's kind of like not one of the first complaints when they're coming in if they're coming in for back pain right but um you know the nutrition side that's a different conversation but but low back pain I don't really have people like specifically you know 
is that's the top of the list, right? So right. anyways. Um, now for nutrition, like if, what if somebody comes in with dryness, is there something you can specifically, like, I know what I do. Like, I don't have to sit around and think of, oh, let's eat these three foods for your dryness. Even though I could really, if I wanted to, I could think of something. I have hormones and I have all sorts of different things I can do. So I'm always approaching it from the way it's, it's easy for me to be like, oh, here's a cream or we're done. You know what I mean? And so yep. when they can't accommodate, you know, some people can't stretch anymore and they can't, and they're dry and I can easily fix it with hormones or essential oils, or there are some herbs that I like, but hormones and essential oils, I find work so much faster that I'm like, okay, I have access to those, but what yeah. nutritionally would exactly. you tell them to do if they weren't going to a hormone doctor and didn't go to somebody who that is a good question. Well, so I don't, I can't say I really had a lot of people ask me about that. I think that's more your like. Yeah, they wouldn't tell you even though it's there. Like you're, you know, I know you yeah. see people with it, but they're not going to like start talking to the chiropractor about vaginal dryness necessarily. Right. I've maybe had one or two over the years mm -hmm. that have brought it up as, as one of their, you know, what a challenge that they have, but it's not like, one, that's why I say it's not one of the leading things people are coming to be talking to me about. Usually it's about, you know, the. I say bigger issues before that becomes a, before that becomes like something that they're wanting to talk about, you know, they're coming in with, you know, whether it be the pain or GI issues or, you know, the anxiety, depression. I mean, that's always a big thing. That's always a big thing for right. some reason um, to pain, you know, fibromyalgia type pain. I would say those are more my complaints than vaginal dryness. Right. Um, you know, every once in a while, somebody will bring that up, but that's not like the first question I have either. You know, I'm dealing with the other stuff. So that's right. a good question. Now, I don't even know what I would tell somebody specifically right. that. Uh, I would, I would obviously recommend a lot of the natural oils, you know, using coconut oil, some of the essential oils, but I don't really, I've never really had a protocol specifically for dryness. Yeah. <laughs> but in the book I that I gave you, like this in menopause essentials, there is a section for like some vaginal things that I researched oils for, but you mentioned something interesting, like the, the reasons that people might have low libido, like they're on hormones or they're menopause or they're aging, which is all hormonal. You said stress and depression, but also trauma. And so since you do hypnosis, have you yeah. ever hypnotized anybody who's like, that's a part of their syndrome because that's a big thing. It be, usually it's more related to pain. It's not, the dryness is not really coming up in, in the hypnosis as much as pain. Or, but even There's sexual even stuff, what if they, do they say like, I, you know, sex is my, it's never their leading thing. Of course, they're going to come to you for pain or nutrition, but you know, is that, have they yeah, ever said you've hypnotized me and now I can have sex again? Or would you ever, if somebody just had that complaint, like, please hypnotize me because I have some issue with sex that's emotional Usually it's it's a little bit down the line right, right. so it's, they've gotten to know me and they're comfortable and then they're opening up that's so it's a little bit down the line so right. that's not like the first thing lead in but yeah i've had people that have been i had one girl that was gang raped mm -hmm. and um she always had issues her libido was like she had literally no libido didn't want to be with her husband even and it wasn't it didn't have anything to do with him it's just it would almost like re-traumatize her even though it was somebody that loved her and she was married to um but she'd have thoughts right i've right. had um you know of another person same thing she was abused when she was like five or six years old and it was always painful so she even though she loved her husband and she loved being with him it was always painful so she right. couldn't enjoy herself it had nothing to do with hormones and nothing to do with her alignment it was all this mental thing she was correlating or uh you know basically i taking something that happened and like associating it with every time I do this, it hurts because of what happened when she was young. And yeah. so, yeah, that, that happens absolutely. But again, it's not, it's not like people come in and say, Oh, this is the first thing that they want to talk about when they right. come in. Right. It's not for you, but for me, it is. And yes. for me, even yeah. sometimes I have to dig because they might say, Oh, you know what? I don't like having, you know, I, I don't, I lost my desire for sex. And I always have to walk back and say, okay, at the beginning, when you had no kids and sex was new and fun. How were you? They're like, okay, it was, right. I was never really there. And I'm like, okay, that's when I have to start. Even if they like sex, I still prompt. I have to ask them, you know, has anything happened that was negative about sex? And I'm always going to, I'm frequently going yeah. to get that. Sometimes it's going to be a big thing. Like they were molested as a child or had unwanted, unforced sexual activity. And some people have other things that were not favorable, but aren't that traumatic. So I always have to, I always have to ask about trauma and yeah. 
or get it out because I'm like, I'm like, I can't really just throw a drug or even vaginal cream or thinking something at you without letting you talk about that, even just admitting it. I mean, hiding it is actually, you know, causes pain. Some people don't realize emotional pain and physical pain are so connected. And if you try to help me fix your physical pain without telling me the trauma, it's just not going to be, I'm not addressing the root cause because you don't tell me, you don't even recognize it as a root cause or it's a connection. Right. Well, and the other thing too, is there are people that suppress memories that are too painful. And so they may not know at the conscious level that, oh, that this did happen. You know, they have like, it's almost like a block of time in their past that they don't remember right. and they don't have access to that. So that's, that's where kind of where hypnosis can be really powerful because it really goes to that very specific moment. With that being said, um, sometimes they know, sometimes they don't, you know, a lot of times it seems like people tend to know that there was something that happened. They may not know exactly what happened. Um, so, but yeah, but that can happen. So, you know, that's, and that's challenging too. It's like, when you try to tell somebody, it's like, you know what, um, there might be something that happened that you don't really know about. So, you know, because how open are people wanting to be to potentially be open to the idea of finding out that something that traumatic happened to them, that their right. subconscious has been hiding from them. Yeah. You know, and so. yeah, you're not going to get that the first visit either, because they've got to trust you yeah. before they'll tell you. But I've had people actually tell me things like, they'll be in their fifties and they've gone to, you know, by the time you're 50, if you're seeing me, you've gone to at least 10 other gynecologists or physicians, or you've been to enough people where you could have told somebody, but somehow they'll tell me something. And even just telling me is therapeutic, yes. but if they had told the wrong person who, you know, I have an hour. So after you tell me something like, oh yeah, my husband's addicted to porn. And I was molested when I was a kid. I had somebody who, you know, told me stuff like that. And And then, you know, she's like, so maybe because that's how I ended up with the husband, because that's my punishment. And when I was a kid, I didn't tell anyone. And so it's my fault because I never told and I should have told. And, you know, you know, so she just had all this whole everything was her fault and everything was blaming, you know, and I was like, you know, you were a child and how could that be your fault? And people, you know, predators tell people that they're going to harm their parents if they tell or harm them if they tell. And so a lot of children are shamed and not telling. So you're not like the only person that's done this. This is actually very common. And then, you know, men being addicted to porn, that's also not new. I mean, you know, oh, I think she'd also been assaulted by, you know, there's like several things that happen. So she's like, if something keeps happening to me, it must be me. And I'm like, there's lots of creepy men in the world and women and people in general, but it's like, it's not hard for us to encounter these people. I mean, you know, and so I'm like, none of it is your fault. It's just things that kept happening to you, but that doesn't mean in the future that something good can't happen to you because it's really not your fault. It's just, and you know, and that made her so much better just to be like, oh, you know, I was thinking everything was my fault and I'm never going to date again because it always turns out badly. And I'm like, it just doesn't have to be, you know, just be even, right. but yeah, but the right, you know, if she'd gone to someone who was like, you know, told her something different than that, then that might right. not have been helpful to her. That, right. It wasn't able to take the time to right. really listen to her. Right. And I think that's a, a big missing in our medical world these days too, is just, yeah, that's, and I think the other part um, is self-forgiveness. You right. know, that's something that's really, really important because we do, we, we hold on to things and blame ourselves. And there's a point where at some point it's like, oh my gosh, I've been holding on to this all these years thinking it was my fault when it actually really wasn't my fault. I was a little kid and I, now I've got to say, you know what? I forgive myself for holding on to that because if I had let it go 20, 30 years ago, then you know, there's that, that component. Right. That like her with the thought telling anybody about her trauma until she got to me. And I was like, you know, that's not, that's not abnormal. I mean, you know, we all wish that everybody would go and tell immediately, but it just rarely works that way. And so, you know, we now have to deal with it at this point. You know, there's actually an essential oil blend called forgiveness. And it's actually on my list. Like I have a, in my book about libido, forgiveness is actually in the, yeah. one of my, it's one of the things I read because it's got certain oils in it that I'd already used, like, you know, Jasmine or, you know, there's certain oils I like for libido anyway, and forgiveness has them all, but a lot of it is sometimes you have to forgive your husband, your mate. Sometimes you have to forgive yourself. Sometimes forgiveness has to happen before you're, you can even allow yourself to have a libido. Sometimes we suppress our libido to punish 
ourselves or the other person. You know what I mean? Like I, yep. I've been assaulted and therefore there, I must be bad. And therefore you got to forgive yourself or else you're, you're not going to live your full potential. And then sometimes your husband has not been all that he was cracked up to be. And then maybe you don't forgive him. And you're like, well, why should I be intimate with him when our intimacy has been challenged? And so, you know, sometimes, you know, forgiveness is a thing that has to happen. And it's not about, ooh, the the hot oils, let me get spice it up. I'm like, no, sometimes you have to start at the beginning, right. get out of pain and forgive something yourself, somebody, you know, so there's well, and just I, more there's to it. There's some people that won't allow themselves to enjoy it. Yeah. Either, or there's like a guilt associated with enjoyment because of like religious upbringing. Right. Um, it was almost like, oh, it's it's dirty or it's a bad thing, you know, because for some reason in some religions, they don't, the way it's portrayed to children can be um, maybe not necessarily, you know, it's it's more of a bad thing than something like a beautiful thing that could be shared with two people, right? right. Whether married or in love or whatever it looks like, right? right. But um, I think there that comes up sometimes as well. Yeah. It's just this guilt associated with enjoying it. So right, yeah, I, and it just depends on how religion was presented to you, because there are some mm-hmm. p- leaders of the flock that might say, "Oh, you know, make it all seem yeah. like fire and brimstone." And then there might also be like, you know, sex is yeah. a gift between the two of you, and it's a wonderful thing, and you should enjoy it. Not like, you know. So it just really depends on how the leader of the flock presented it to you or even your parents sometimes you know your yeah. parents will be like shame 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 and here you are with you know nothing but shame yeah and yeah so it's a really interesting you know thing to think about you know all the different components of what could possibly be challenge you know causing somebody to have pain or not have that desire or um oh it's interesting yep now about it to this level you know, see, but I mean, I know it's weird when you think about sex and a lot of people do. And I've done two happy talks about sex. Like here's your adrenal gland and here's your mm-hmm. hormones and here are all the oils you could put in the room to set the mood and, and all of that needs to happen. And it's awesome. But, but a lot of my job during the day is focused around digging around and like, let's start at the beginning. Does it hurt? Do you have, how are your feelings towards intercourse did you ever have a sex drive you know because it's hard to like spice up your sex life if you were always sort of like "Eh." you know what I mean I've had people who I was like I had this one lady I remember I was like okay on a scale of one to ten with ten being you really like sex like you're almost a nymphomaniac and zero meaning like what is sex I don't even have a memory of it doing it you know I was like she goes she thought about it she goes can I use negative numbers Oh. Right. I was like, okay. <laughs> it was like, all right, where did we start? Like when we were, you know, usually when we're 18, we're pretty, we're about as good as we're going to get. I mean, even though we might have a sexual peak at 35, you know, 18 is, you know, you're pretty free. You probably don't have kids. You're finally out of the house. Like now it's fun time. And I was like, so when you were like 18 and you could have sex without a bunch of, you know, rules and stuff, what were you? They're like, mm, a two. I'm like, okay. <laughs> That's a different work than when I have somebody who used to be an eight and now she's a two. And I'm like, oh, okay. You remember, at least we have a memory to go back to. We have a, we have a goal, but when I have a two, I'm like, okay, I, I have more digging to do because there's a reason she started out as a two. There's definitely something there for me to right, get into. Right. And we have to get through a lot of stuff. Yeah. And then I even asked to have to ask about the husband, you know, what, how does he feel about it? And has he changed and is he less interested? So he's not putting energy in Then you kind of feed off right. of that. I mean, it's a, it's a dance here. This is none of this is a solo, you know, monologue they, they, in the theater. They, always, they kind of say that that's definitely an important topic to have before marriage to make sure that people are kind of on the same page <clears throat> with with that, you know, because you have one person that's got like a really strong drive, the other person doesn't have one. And that could be like really lead to relationship issues later on, I think so. Right. Yeah, I, yeah, I, th- I talk about it all day long. Like when women are like, I need a sex drive. I'm like, back up. Does your husband have prostate issues? Does he have diabetes? Does he have, I, you know, I'm not taking a full history on him, but I was like, I have to know if like, I give you the sex drive and is he ready for you to, 
because maybe he's uninterested and you think he's uninterested because you don't approach him and he's just not bothering you. But let's dig into whether he's really having issues and I'm going to send you home like all ready and willing and able. And he's like, well, you know, I'm still kind of, you know, I was like, we got to, I got to ask. Right. <laughs> and I was like, I, I, I was like, this is always a two way street here. Yep, exactly. So exactly. I look so. at that. Now for men, do you, feel that any of your chiropractic adjustments help with their erectile function or do, is there a big interplay with well, that? You know, that's a good question. Again, it's, it's almost, I, that doesn't come up a lot. I mean, it's one of the questions I ask in their history. But they don't like to tell you, right? But I say, I know that they don't, usually if yeah. I find out a man has a problem, it's because his wife dragged him in and, and she told me it's not necessarily because he just popped up by himself telling me that. I mean, I, I always ask because I think that's, to me, that's such an important, you yeah. know, especially more for men, I think, than women even. Yeah. Um, because it's, it's, you know, so I do ask with that because I think that's something too, the nutrition has such an impact on testosterone levels. And so I definitely just bring it up, you know, especially prostate health, you know, that's always important because that's so preventable with nutrition too, right? Um, but it's not really, again, it's not really related more as much to chiropractic as it is to the functional medicine nutrition side. And so that's when I start having that conversation more so. Um, but as far as the, like I said, the back pain, I mean, when I think about that, when they're talking about low back, usually it's more around, I can't reach around. I mean, I've had one guy basically tell me that, you know, he hurt his back doing some acrobatic stuff with his wife. That was kind of funny. Um, oh, know. wait, so sex, sex hurt his back and now he has to fix it so he can get back. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Something, I don't remember. It was kind of funny. I was like, well, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> he was probably trying to pick her up and they fell <laughs> I was like yeah usually I'm good at <laughs> and usually it's that that was you know and he was a little embarrassed and I'm like nothing to be embarrassed about but if I know the me you know the mechanism of how you hurt yourself it also can help in uh, knowing how to help fix you too right? right um but yeah no I mean I'm for some people tend to be pretty at ease talking to me which is kind of nice it makes it easy but but yeah, that's kind of funny. I, <laughs> so when I had that guy, he's like, and he was, he was, I said, well, you know what? It happens. You know, right, just, right. People get a little right. wild sometimes. And so, yeah, but no, but otherwise, no, I don't really have them saying that that's like a direct issue they're dealing with. Like I said, that's like down the list. Right. They're more concerned with, I can't bend over to put my shoes and socks on. Right. <laughs> I yeah. have a hard time rotating back to just wipe myself. Right. I can't, I can't clean myself very good in the shower because I can't move a certain way or uh, getting up and out of a chair. You know, that, I think, I guess I hear more complaints like that than I do about, you know, that's like, like I said, down the line a little bit. Um, if, if that, yeah, that just, it is what it is. It's down the line a little bit for me. They're not coming in with that as the leading problem. Yeah. And so now have you ever had anybody use essential oils for their sex drive or their mood or anything? Um, like for libido or like libido. I mean, like for libido yeah. and like, you know, like which, not, which are your favorite oils? Not that, I mean, I knew I don't really, I guess I don't really have people asking that much about that now that I'm thinking about that. It's, you know, the topics are a little bit different. I think this is more your realm for sure, because that's, you know, people are coming to you more for that. Um, right. I had, um, but I figure you, you see a lot of back pain and if your back is out, then sex is out, but I guess it's a temporary thing. So that's not their first thing. Whereas exactly. for me, exactly. by the time yeah. they get to me, the, se the sex problem has been around for a, a minute, you know, right. it's not like yesterday. Right. They're probably not having the pain. They're just having that issue. Yeah, my people um, all have a year so, or two history of like my libido has been bad and it's been a year or two or 10, you know, <laughs> I mean, like, you know, exactly, yeah, exactly. So, um, so yeah, that's why I say I'm not, it's not really the, the topic of a big conversational topic that I have as much. I do know um, my patients, like a lot of my guys that have really low energy or they're fatigued or a lot, or lots of chronic fatigue type of thing, you know, they tend to have low T. And that does change. I mean, that shifts everything. We start working on nutrition with them, right. but it's, it's not, you know, it's not like the first complaint is not necessarily, Oh, it, my low sex drive. It's, I'm just exhausted. I mean, I'm just worn out and I'm, you know, tired all the time and I don't have the ambition I used to have, or I don't have the, uh, um, it, you know, that that's, 
what I hear more than so yeah I mean I, I guess that I hear those complaints more but because but when we start working on those things we start getting their energy back and they're feeling better then then of course everything starts working out so I think if they were still having issues around sex libido that's when they'd probably be more likely to reach out to somebody like you where that's like a very specific thing right but I, but I no, yeah, sometimes I get well I mean I get a lot of fatigue like yeah. we menopause and fatigue go together and then the sex drivers go with it but they usually blame it on the fatigue so they're not like even though yeah they have decreased libido they don't always come in and say my problem is look decreased libido sometimes their problem is i just don't want to get up i wake up i'm tired i don't even want to go to work and i drag my butt through work i have to take a nap so they're, they're having this whole tired yeah. thing but i still drag it back to let me check your dha and let me check your testosterone and everybody doesn't want hormones most of my patients right. do but some of them are like can i naturally do this and that's when i'll, I'll actually dig in my box of male essential oils to give to the women like Shutran and Valor. And I'll be like, use these because if you want something natural and, or even, let's say they they come in and they're like, I'm kind of okay, but my husband's really not, you know, his sex drive. I don't think his interest is there. And then I'll be like, all right, take this oil. You both need it <laughs> because yeah. you both probably want to, you know, even if your his testosterone's not low, I haven't checked it and I don't know, but I was like, so which one do you typically recommend for both in that realm like the shoe trans right so yeah young living okay. has like yeah. three that are more targeted towards that valor is kind of a male fragrance and it does have some boosting activity shoe trend is really what they use to target men and so is mister but when i let men smell all three of them most of them really like shoe trend and really like valor mister is something you're going to use if you really need it but it's not going to be your new favorite cologne Right. Cause, yeah, cause really, I, I, like the I keep that I at my house for me. I, yeah. Do you use it for you? I have the shoe tram body oh, no, wash. I, just, I literally, I, I'm like, yeah. Oh, good. I really like that one. I do. I actually, I wear that one and I have the body wash. I actually really like shoe tram, but it could be that my body feels like it needs testosterone too. Women, by the time they're 50, they're not working with the same amount that they used to be, whether it's, you want to call it low or not, they still aren't as good as they were at 30 and you know it's nice to have be surround yourself with things that give you a little extra so can can using the oils mm -hmm. give them enough of a boost because it seems like i'm hearing so many women these days that are going and getting like testosterone pellets oh yeah that would be they would be coming to me to get those i do that now okay i will tell you this about oils and hormones because i know this very well mm -hmm. If I give you a hormone, I can make, I can give you any level that I want. If I want, if your estrogen level is two and I want it to be 300, I can do it with hormones. I can do it with a shot. I can do it with a pellet. I can make a pill. It doesn't matter. I just give you the amount that I want to give you whatever number I want. I can control your hormones. I can turn you into a man. You know what I mean? I can do whatever I want with those hormones. I cannot do that with oils. With oils, I can take, if you're a two, I can put you back up to 20 or 30 or like whatever some reasonable number for a woman is, but I cannot overdose you. You can like swallow a bottle of Shutran and you are not going to have this crazy testosterone. Essential oils and even herbs don't really work that way. They'll help you, but they won't, I, they can't turn you into a guy. There is no set of essential yeah. oils where I can turn you into a man. Whereas I could take a woman and turn her into a male. Yeah. We do that. I mean, I don't do that, but I'm just saying like, there are physicians who specialize in changing your sex with hormones. So I'm like, hormones are that powerful and oils are yeah. helpful, very yeah. helpful, but not to that degree. So, I mean, it depends on how so fast. Yeah. A preference. I mean, what do you, if you're working with somebody like also, you know, ideally right. long-term, yeah. what would you prefer to, to do with people? You know, when it comes to oils, though, I mean, the one that studied like some, a doctor that was really involved with young living did a study on Idaho blue spruce, and he actually did it in men and documented that it did increase their testosterone levels by 30%. Well, if you're a female and your testosterone level is 10 and you increase it by 30%, you're not even 20. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, so it's going to increase you, but it's still not going to blow you out of the water. So yes, there are essential oils that are helpful. 
I have women use the oil that they like. If they think Shutran is awesome and would use it every day, use that. If you think Valor is awesome and would use it every day, use that. If you like Idaho blue spruce and want to use it every day. So I think consistency is better than like, oh, today I want my testosterone to be high. It doesn't really work that way. So I'm like, find one that you like. Here's your three choices and then wear it everywhere. Valor has a soap. Valor has, you know, shoe trend has an aftershave. I mean, it's like find a way to incorporate this as much as you can. But I would also, when I'm trying to boost testosterone, I always have to attack it in multiple ways. If I'm not actually using testosterone, I, they have, mm -hmm. I have to optimize their DHEA because you can make testosterone out of DHEA. Your body will like mm -hmm. convert some. So I would use multiple things. If you have enough progesterone, you have more access to testosterone. If you have enough DHEA, you have access to testosterone. And I would have you use an essential oil if you really want to get to really good levels. You know what I mean? Right. But, mm -hmm. So I, I would have people, I, I tell them like one thing is not going to work, but three things are definitely going, you're going right. to notice right. that. One thing you might not notice, three things you're going to notice. Yeah. So do you, so just, I guess out of curiosity, I, I know that they use the testosterone for women, but is yes. there, is it more beneficial to try to do things as not more naturally, or I, I mean, what are the side effects or implications of, of adding the testosterone, testosterone hormone? You know, it depends on the goal because mm -hmm. if someone says my husband's at the end of his rope, if I don't come up with a sex drive in the next month, I I'm in big trouble. Yep. Well, we're going to use testosterone because that's fast. I give you a shot. You're there. But if, you know, okay. someone has the kind of time and luxury, let's say they're not in pain and they're not terribly dry. They're just kind of like, I'm dragging. I need to start working on it because I'm on my way down and I, I just need to do some work. Oh yeah, we got natural stuff. Okay. And so, and like yeah. I said, it's easy, you know, it's not easy, but just, you know, Young Living has a lot of DHEA containing products, the Prenolone Plus and the Endogize and you know, they, they just have a few different products where it's like, if you take this one and then let me manage your stress for you. And here, let's pick one of these woody oils, most of the wooden oils. And I tell people, you know, it's, it's wood, it's cedar wood and pine wood and spruce and fir. All those woody ones are kind of very male. There's a reason they're all in all the male colognes. They just have this male pheromone thing that they're doing so right, right. so I mean it's like yeah. any of the wooden, wooden oils that you like are helpful to you so I really you yeah. know it's a balance of a lot of different things there's some power Gize has a lot of those male libido herbs there's a couple of herbs in there that have been studied to increase male and female testosterone so depending on their other problems I'll put together something that's going to help but it won't get yeah. them some women don't actually have a really good sex drive that matches their husband until I take them above normal ranges. Some women do respond to just a normal range and that's fine. But some women, depending on what else is going on, especially if they have like pain or an autoimmune disease, they're going to respond to higher levels. I give them a little, their pain's going to suck it up and be like, yeah, you gave me something and their libido won't get it. So it's always this whole game I have to play. Like, let's see how much, like, let me just keep adding testosterone until we get where we're going. Until you get what you want. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. No, I was just curious because I, I kind of wonder, you know, how, because I think too, because I know you spend a lot of time with people mm -hmm. and a lot of these docs, I don't think they do. I think it's no. like, here, take the pellet, take the shot. No, yeah. And they, everybody, no. I think pellets are way overboard, you know, <laughs> I mean, they're, they'll get you a sex drive, but you know, I mean, I think they're a lot. And I, like I said, I use them, but I also don't use the same protocol that other doctors are using. I'm trying to like get you exactly where you need to be and not like everybody, let's take 10 times as much as we need. Yeah. Oh, now, and that's going to cover everyone. And I'm like, no, let's get where you need to be <laughs> without overdoing it and taxing your body. You know, your body likes, doesn't like too little hormones, but it really doesn't always like too much for too long of a time. It's, you know, if you're stress level isn't managed. I have just created a person with a lot of hormones, a lot of different directions, and it's not necessarily awesome. Yeah. awesome. No, I just, I wonder too about that, you know, as far as putting together, um, that'd be interesting, you know, to put together a little protocol for, um, specific for like increasing your sex drive, you know, using specific, you know, it's in the book. It's in the book. If you look in the book, no, yeah, there's, I definitely have a specific testosterone boosting thing. 
in the book. And if somebody used enough of the products that I recommended, they would definitely see a noticeable change in their testosterone level. Yep. Well, I know this because I check everybody all the time. So I know, I, I mean, I can look and be like, what are you on? Because this, this is supposed to be this good. Yeah. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I took this, this and that. I'm like, yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> so it's like, oh, you can do it. And with a zero testosterone, it's very hard to have a sex drive. If, you know, if your testosterone level is zero and I, and I actually looked the paper and before I even, you know, when I started talking to them, I'm like, you don't have a sex drive. They're like, how did you know? And I'm like, I'm looking at the zero. <laughs> it's really, really hard. You have to have like at least some number sitting here before if it's like less than five, it's like undetectable. I'm like, if it's undetectable, you're going to, you know, have to fake it. And you don't want to do that, right? Right. 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 Yeah. yeah. So the, good, the, the advantage to being a female is that we can fake it, but the disadvantage is, you know, we might want to, we need the testosterone for other things besides the libido. Right. Exactly. Like, no, I agree with that like bravery and assertiveness and, you know, just something about testosterone just gives you like valor. That's why I like valor. Valor is bravery. It's the collection of herbs that warriors used to put on to go into battle, you know? So I'm like, I like valor. Some people just, they say things to me and I'm like, valor, that's you. <laughs> let's see, let's see. What else? What else? So oils, mostly the the valor, the- Mr. and the shoe tram. Mr. and shoe tram. Like, and I like it for men and women, you know, it's marketed one way, but, and even like the power jize is their collection of herbs. It's like their pill that's just like, you know, horny goat and- mm -hmm long jack and different herbs like you know have those suggestive names but there it's marketed towards men but i'll look at a female and be like yeah you should take that too and they're like what i'm like oh yeah some of those herbs okay. were studied in women even though it's marketed to men because that's just a bigger audience and it's less dangerous so you give up those herbs to a male he can't you know he, he's not going to carry a baby but if i tell a 20 year old to take them she shouldn't take them because they're herbs that she should not get pregnant on my women are mostly menopausal. That is not our problem. So they can take it. Yeah. So it's just one of those things that you want to know. But yeah, I really like the male herbs for female libido. Gotcha, gotcha. Yep. Yeah. So, now, do what do you own? Do you own like the sensation? Have you ever used like sensation oil or no, lady sclerol? I, I really haven't. I've used them more like just to have in the air to, you know, for. But smell. that's what I mean, but that's um, sufficient. You can, you can diffuse. I mean, if you own them and diffuse them, you don't oh, have to put true. them on. Cause I even tell women sometimes when they're like, he doesn't want to take anything and he doesn't think he has a problem. And I'm like, diffuse some stuff in the room, <laughs> diffuse some valor, diffuse some shoe trend, diffuse Mr. He'll just think the room smells pretty and you got a new you know, candle, yeah. you know, he won't know that you, you're hijacking him. It's like, that's the beauty of it. It's for you, but he'll smell it too. And yeah. if your dogs run out and reproduce, that's a different thing. You know, I don't know, but, <laughs> but there's that. So do you, do you own like sclerescence or lady sclerol? I do. I like the, which one was it that I got? Like recently? lady sclerol like smells like good. Oh, you like sclerescence. Yeah. I think I like the sclerescence better. Um, you like the way it smells better? Because Lady Sclerol smells more perfumey because it's got ylang ylang in it. But the sclerescence stops hot flashes. Like to me, now I want to get I'm in there hot. and like start smelling stuff. You have to me. smell your so stuff. I remember what I have because I'm like, oh my goodness, I have I have so many. I'm sure you do too. I do so too. Many that I forget which ones are which sometimes. Most of them I remember. Most of them I know. I mean, I've smelled them so much and played with them so much that most of them, if you wave it under me, I'll be like, oh yeah, I know what that is. Like I can identify like almost every blend and every oil just by smelling them. Really? Or I can even smell a blend and tell you some of what's in it. I'll be like, oh, I smell Ylang Ylang. You know, I smell patchouli. I hate patchouli. <laughs> like that's the one oil. I'm like, that is never going on my list of sex drive oils. Even if it's on someone else's list, I'm like, I will not ever tell you to put, <laughs> there's certain things I'm like, it might be good. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you to do it. <laughs> that's funny. I know there was a girl when I was uh, in school and she wore that every week, patchouli all the time. <laughs> and to the point we would call her, refer to her as patchouli. <laughs> like, it was so I, I hope her name wasn't Julie, patchouli Julie. <laughs> that would have been funny. Just, yeah. Yeah. It was just like, 
Yeah, yeah, I was trying to remember. I think that that's the one I like more than the Lady Sclero for some reason. The sclerescence. You like the sclerescence more than Lady Sclero. Mm -hmm. See, I'm I'm the op. I mean, Lady Sclero, I would wear as a perfume. Sclorescence, I like it, but I used it as a part of my, I would like take Progestins Plus and Sclorescence and put it on my neck and my chin every day. It really got, made me stop breaking out there too. Like my chin that used to break out a lot because, you know, they've got a lot of antibacterial, antimicrobial oils in it. And I think it just take you know, change my skin and so I really I liked it for my skin but I never flashed again after I started doing that and I rarely I wasn't really flashing anyway because I was doing other lots of different things but like not even warm I used to kind of get warm sometimes and now I like nothing like you could lay you could lay, put me in a sauna and I'm like I don't sweat <laughs> like it made me like that Oh my resistant to sweating so ladies I mean not lady sclera I was like sclerescence was my friend for that reason but I don't want to I think it's there's fennel in it and whenever you put fennel in something it's automatically not a perfume to me you know what I mean I, it's just it is what it is I'll put it on my face because it's good for your skin but and then there are certain oils that are vaginal safe and did I write that? I think that's in my book. One of my book chapters, yeah, so. if people look under dryness, they'll see which ones can go down there without hurting you terribly. You know, cause you yeah, don't put peppermint. No, certain ones it's like, don't, don't do that unless you know how to dilute. Like, you know, yep, yep. I know how to dilute anything, to, but there are certain ones I'm like, yeah, that's going to be spicy, but there are some that are really nice and that aren't going to be too spicy. Okay. I'm looking. Yeah. I don't, I don't ladies they're all here I'm, i've got a lot of them at the office so i can smell them too. oh yeah no yeah i love ladies girl it's very there's a lot of them that are very perfumey like sarah release mm -hmm. and ladies like sclera mm -hmm. those three i love them just i put them on and walk out as a perfume the one i like but i don't want to use as a perfume what was i doing there was somebody one day I happen to have sclerescence with me in my purse. I never carry it. It's always at my house. But that one day I happen to have it and I diffused it in the office. Like when I go to the office, I diffuse the whole time I'm there, especially since the quarantine and all that. So this lady comes in and she's like, you know what? I have hot flashes like every 15 minutes, like for like a couple of years, like I'm constantly having them. And while, you know, I see people for an hour, by the end of the hour, I'm like, have you had any while you've been sitting here with me? And she's like, no. And I'm like, oh yeah, I've been diffusing <laughs> sclerescence. Oh, yeah. You should get, you should get some <laughs> if it's going to help you at all. <laughs> I was like, it can only, you know, so she, and, and it helped her a lot. So I was like, that is like my go-to. There's stuff in it that is just helpful. But Lady Sclerol, I would just keep in my purse and wear as a perfume or release. I would just be like, oh, I think I need more fragrance. And let me just throw something behind my ears. And here I go. Joy, acceptance. There's a lot of them I like that is just like better than perfume. They just, they just smell. Yeah, yeah, I agree. If you like flowers. I like the new and bloom. I, I, that's what's in my purse right now. I love that. Oh, my goodness. Yep. I have the yeah, whole bloom been, line. I've tried them all. Have you tried all of it? Because I think there's a slide in here about cosmetics and getting yourself pretty. Where is the cosmetic slide? Oh, here it is. Get glammed up. So they're, they're talking about, you know, when you want to set the mood and pencil it in and do a whole production that day about it. But one of the things is, is like putting your makeup on. If you're kissing your husband, do you want to have cosmetics on that are safe for both of you? Oh, good question. Good point. Yeah. But also, like, so I, I like the Bloom stuff. I like the Art Serum. Yeah, I ran out of that. I need some more. I like the Art Serum. I like Bloom. And I love their lip glosses. Do you do you have their lipsticks or their lip glosses, or do you use either of those daily? Just the gloss. I know the gloss is my favorite. The lipsticks, I like them in their nice colors, but the glosses just glide so well. And they're so moisturizing. I don't think I've ever tried the gloss. I don't think I've ever ordered one. So yeah, I like the gloss a lot, but I use those all the time. Oh yeah. So, yeah. Those I think I prefer more than, yeah. Yeah. They have, I think the cinnamon lipstick is, it does glide on pretty well, like a lipstick. Uh, so I like that, but the glosses are like my favorite. I'm, there's never a time since I started ordering those glosses that I don't have at least one or two. One in my yeah. purse, one no, by I, my, one, one in my room. I and I always have a gloss. All over. Yep. <laughs> always have a gloss don't let them go on sale i'm buying them all 
a clear it's just young living i mean it's sandy minerals uh -huh. yes lifts, yeah you we have the, to yeah because we've traded them before you you think i had one that was too light for me and i gave it to you because it was i could you couldn't see it on me <laughs> so I, well this one's just clear this one is just plain oh clear, see so. i don't have any clear yeah. ones yeah all the ones i have are I, yeah i always buy their darkest one because you know that's it'll show up on me yeah, I know which one it was. It was the it was like a light color that you that I gave to like, you. I don't like this one. Well, it didn't show up on me, but the Maven is the one that I have to wear because that's the only one. You know, that's the one that shows the the best on me. Yeah. But the, the that one was it somehow on the screen. It looked like it was going to be nice a nice like pink, but then after I put it on, I was like, okay, if I want it clear, that's fine. But here, well, they're real sheer. They're very they sheer. Have a lot of color to them. Correct. They're, they're more just a tint. Because correct. So yeah. But they're so moisturizing. I love them. Yep. That's what I was just thinking. This this lip one, I like this a lot too. This clear one. Mm -hmm. It's just clear though. It's not, it didn't have any color at all. Yeah. So it's just a pure, it's like almost like chapstick. It's like yep. clear. Yeah. Yeah. But it's more, it's more oil based. So right. It's a little bit more moisturizing. So, yeah. yeah. I like their lip balms. They have little flavored lip balms too, but I mostly wear the colored things because I'm always in need of color. Yeah. So, you know, the thing I like about Young Living Now is that you don't have to buy the kit. Have you gotten a lot more people to sign up since you they don't need to have the starter kit? You know, what I've been doing is if I don't have something in stock, I just go and log on and just tell them, here's the deal. It's Well, what's really great is, I mean, they basically get our costs now. If yeah. they log in yep. and you put something on auto ship or if they have an order that's $100, it automatically just gives them our cost that I would get if I'm buying. Correct. Like, I don't know how they're doing this, but correct. Anyways, yeah. So no, it it's, it's actually been easier. Yes. To just have people go and order on their own account compared right. to you buying it and reselling it. Right. Exactly. Now they have their own exactly. account, and I, I think once they do that, they get the deal for a year. As long as they buy something every year or stay on auto ship, they get it. They get the twenty four percent discount, which is a, a lot. Yeah. No, I think so too. I mean, it's a pretty good deal. So that's a good deal. Anyways, I, um, yeah, so no, that's been kind of nice. It's just easier to send people a link and have people sign up and buy it. So I'm not having to, you know, order and, you know, especially when I don't, because there's so many products. I don't always have everything in my office. Or, right. Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't even. Office, right? Yeah. You know, I don't carry anything at all. I mean, like I said, I have things and I'll make certain products, but I don't, ha I don't sell a lot of different things I just I mean unless I have a couple of friends that I'll run into and they'll say hey next time you order can you grab me an extra this or that so sometimes I do but I don't carry stuff sitting on a shelf I'll order right, and right. give to people who ha can wait but somebody who wants something more sooner than that I'm just like here's what I you know think would work and shop you know go shopping and here's your list <laughs> I've narrowed it down or you know most a lot of people have my book and I'm like go flip to this page in the book and then and read what I said and and it'll narrow it down for you because you know there's 600 products that can be overwhelming so and you know especially even with it like I said when it comes to sex drive there's not like one particular product that's you know but there's a lot of different ways that you could address many of the things that are in your way using these right, products right. even melatonin I mean they I did a study I mean I read a study on melatonin and sex drive and it's beneficial because if you don't get proper sleep you're too tired the next day to do anything anyway so something about melatonin and testosterone and libido you know they have a very they're in a favorable loop if you get proper sleep that and you know all kinds of things are impacted by sleep so it's so important yep well, you're fatigued, you know, so if you don't get enough sleep, you're fatigued. And if you're too fatigued, you don't want to do anything, including intercourse, which is very right. high energy. So it's all down the, you know, I improve your sleep and then you're less tired. And then you're like, okay, I'm open to new experiences here. Very true. Yep. I know there's something energy, getting enough sleep, just in general, like everything is better when I get enough sleep. <laughs> Okay, so, so what about sleep is my one of my priorities? <laughs> what about foods and sex drive, like oysters? Are there any like particular foods you ever tell people to do? Oysters have no, zinc, and zinc increases really testosterone. Food, mm -hmm. Yeah, zinc is important because if the testosterone are increasing your zinc, necessarily increases test sex drive. I think it just gets it back to what it should be. Right. Um, yeah, I think people don't realize it's like, oh, I've had a low sex drive, and so it's like 
now that they have their supplements and they're getting the right nutrients, then they have a normal sex drive again. Um, but I don't think it like, it's not like a uh, Viagra or something. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it does definitely, if you have a lack of certain new, like especially zinc, zinc, mm-hmm. magnesium, if you don't eat enough protein, you don't have enough arginine, then you can't make testosterone, you know, so, so people don't realize your body sometimes just makes testosterone, but frequently it needs building blocks to even get to that point. And if you're like, I'm on a low protein diet, I just eat carbs. I'm like, well, then you don't have any protein and you yeah. can't make any hormones. And so you're going to get all of the benefits. Too, too much <laughs> carbs, like you said, yeah. or um, that, that can actually have a negative impact as well. Yeah. Cause it feeds like your insulin. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It feeds yeah. your insulin and feeds your cortisol and cortisol steals all your hormones and all you, you, you know, cortisol is not a sex life promoting hormone. It's the opposite of that. So you don't want to feed that with your diet. I was just thinking you sent me that list and I, I, um, I glanced at it and then I forgot I had it. <laughs> oh Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah. So one of the blends is Endoflex, which is another adrenal supportive blend. So yeah, the adrenal glands are like super important in sex drive. It could just literally be a whole adrenal class. Like if your adrenal glands are shot, you are not going to want to do anything, including that. So do you use them Endoflex? That's one of the oils that can comes in a vitality and one could ingest it if they wanted to. No, I haven't been using that. I know they isn't there a supplement also, Endoflex supplement? There's Endogize, which yeah. has DHEA, okay. and Endoflex, which is the oil, which comes in vitality, which means you can eat it, and the regular oil, which is topical, or you can diffuse it. But it's supposed to support all of your endocrine glands, including your thyroid and your adrenal gland. It's like very glandular supporting. It's very, yeah. Mm-hmm. But like I said, I like that it's edible. You can put it in your iced tea. You know, it's like, I find out what people drink. Like they say, I drink iced tea every day. You mean like how strong tasting? The flavor. Mm -hmm. It, it doesn't, if you ever ate the lady sclerol, it it tastes a lot like lady sclerol to me. Lady sclerol, Juvaflex and Endoflex all have something in common where I can taste it. It's like, maybe there's a clary sage in all of them. There's something in all three of them that I'm like, I taste you. And the Juvaflex, it's, it's a liver hormone, and even that's kind of important. Um, I actually like an iced tea. Yeah, this is good. Dragon time. Okay. Yeah, the dragon time. Yes. Yeah, if, if somebody feels like they're like, I my sex drive is okay, but I just look at him and get so mad, and then I don't want to have sex with them. I'm like, oh, yeah, dragon time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's usually the story I'm going to hear where I'm like, you know, I'm thinking dragon time for you. <laughs> name is like awesome and it is awesome but i'm like as long as like sometimes i do and then i have pms and then i don't i'm like oh dragon time okay <laughs> that's too funny yeah and then clary sage clary sage i know that what i know about clary sage it's it's an oxytocin producing dr- um hormone i mean a essential oil so like when people go into labor like some of the essential oils that can help with oxytocin and labor and that particular hormone is like clary sage and jasmine. So those mm-hmm. two are, oxytocin is like, it's your hormone that puts you into labor, but it's also your bonding hormone. So whenever people are like, right. you know. So which we said clary sage. And oh, jasmine. And ja- so jasmine yeah. smells good. So I usually tell people jasmine is first. Jasmine is my first okay. choice because it smells so flowery and yummy and clary sage it's not flowery it's you know it's more grassy it's in the it's in the sclerescent so you know scler- you know by the time right, you put right. clary sage and fennel together it's it's kind of grassy <laughs> yeah it's, it's grassy grass. and licorice <laughs> yeah i'm not a big licorice i'm, I'm not I a big but, licorice but fennel is a it has yeah. that anise like even anise i really like and you know it's kind of more of like an anise licorice kind of thing so it's an interesting taste it's kind of sweet like you know something you can use it it adds a little sweetness to it but like i said it 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 works so well that i like it and it doesn't taste bad it's just an interesting it's an interesting smell and taste that's not quite flowery enough for me i like flowery things that it's not gonna be too um much you know what i mean if it, it's if it's not it's not going to overpower whatever they're eating or no drinking. no 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 no. it's well balanced like yeah. you know the sage okay. and because we use sage in our food and it's not very strong clary sage is kind of on the same boat fennel 
you know, it's slightly licorice but it's not really too bad. I accidentally put it in guacamole once because the fennel bottle and the lemon bottle look exactly alike and I did not separate them. So I just picked it oh, up and funny. stuck it in guacamole and I was like, well, you can still eat it, but you're not going to do this again. <laughs> right, right. Because right. I only use one drop anyway. So I was like, okay, but my, even my mother was like, what's going on with the guacamole? And I was like, well, <laughs> I was wondering if you were going to notice. <laughs> <laughs> but there's fennel how's your sex drive no I'm <laughs> That's funny. yeah i know that's that happens i'm like yeah it's like we're gonna eat this anyways because <laughs> no. because i'm not making another one actually i put yes. carrot seed oil in there once and i was like and i'm not gonna do that again <laughs> that's funny okay so i have a I think I put something on Instagram about how I tried like 35 different brands of oil. How many different brands of oil have you tried like before Young Living? Over the years, I, you know, I'll have to say, I mean, before I would pick, I probably pick things up from more of a, you know, like Whole Foods type of place. Yep. And I wasn't really you know, I didn't use a ton of oils. That's the thing that's kind of interesting. I didn't, you know, use a lot of essential oils until I really was introduced to Young Living. And I mean, I was familiar with all the botanical extracts from more of a supplement side, but not necessarily from the the aromatic side, you know, the way, you know, using them in diffusers and that kind of thing. So obviously peppermint, I always use peppermint, right. eucalyptus. I mean, those were pretty standard, but I can't say I, I really tested them the way you did. I didn't go and buy all different brands and just trial them. Um, I kind of went with, um, you know, it's like, it just seemed, you know, Dr. You know, I work with Dr. Ali some. And so when he introduced me to him, I'm like, well, you know what? I kind of thought, you know, he's obviously done his research. So Mm -hmm. that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. So that was, and I started using them and I really enjoyed them. So I haven't, I can't say I've compared and contrasted that much. So. Yeah, Yeah, no, I mean, I wasn't even really initially trying to do that necessarily like when I took my class on aromatherapy that I had to take when I got my naturopathic medical degree it was online so I had to order these Mm -hmm. this kit online they told us exactly where to order it from so there was no thought to it that was like really really my first set of essential oils and I liked them and I had nothing to compare it to and I'm like okay these are cool and then I ran out of those and then I was like well let me go to the store oh look there's these other kinds and I started picking up one here and one there without really thinking about the brand I was like yeah I have an oil and there's another oil I don't care and then and some every once in a while we get an oil and I was like, this one doesn't smell like the other bottle of lavender or the other bottle of frankincense or the other bottle. I was like, some of these smell like gas, you know? So I was, yeah. so I clearly knew that there were they some that so were like weird. Them. I was like, some yeah. of these are like, clearly this is not a pure flower because flowers don't smell like gas. So <laughs> that's hint number one. So I was like, okay, there's a difference in quality. And so, you know, by then I collected like 30 something different brands. And then, by, you know, I started having patients come in that were, you know, builders in Young Living that, you know, were making, you know, they were ranked in Young Living and they were using supplements. Really, I didn't start using Young Living because of the oil so much, but because their supplements had oils in them. And I liked, you know, they had a lot of hormonally relevant supplements and I'm like, oh, these are actually going to get me fit into my protocols very nicely. I like these supplements. And then I started buying more and more of their oils. And I was like, when I compared them to the other ones I had, I'm like, clearly these are more powerful. They're, they're, they're just, they smell stronger and they smell like the plant I think they came from. And these other ones I'm like, are either much weaker. They just didn't, I felt like I got further in my plans with the Young Living oils. That, that I felt that I experienced that I was getting more out of it. Like the people in Young Living who would come in who are older and their hormone levels should have been zero. I would check their hormone levels and I'm like, you have hormones. You, I was expecting not, you know, so I was like, there's something happening here and you're not already on hormones. So I, I knew that they were doing stuff to people's bodies that I wasn't seeing with people who are like, yeah, I got mine from Whole Foods even. I have some from Whole Foods, so I know exactly what they're talking about. <laughs> I think they're that's more one, consistent too, as far as yeah. just the, the flavor profiles you right. know, when you open them. You can eat them. very similar. That's the other problem. Sometimes I want people yes. to put, put it, you're going to drink five cups of coffee a day. I don't want you to do that, but at least put a drop of 
cinnamon or peppermint or something, but I can't tell you to do that if you got it from whole foods. I mean, I'm limited and you putting it in your protein shake or putting it in your soup or putting it in your guacamole. Like I cannot tell you to do that, but that's a whole way I have of using oils that if I do nothing else, I'm going to put a drop of lemon in my water every day or a drop of orange in my water every day. I mean, at minimum, I'm going to do that. But if you have stuff that you got at the drugstore, you, you cannot do that. And that's a easy way to get something inside your body. Or if I'm going to tell right, people right. to, you know, if they're like, oh, and I was having vaginal itching and then I, what, what should I do? Well, I can't tell you to go grab an oil and do anything if I don't know where it came from. Cause if it's like one of my gasoline oils, that's not what I want down there. Exactly. So that's yep. why I'm like, so that we're all talking the same language. I want everybody to be using the brands that I'm using because at least I know drop for drop, like, okay, you need five drops, you need seven drops, but for the one from, you know, the store that's maybe is diluted, like it's not the first pot of coffee, it's the fifth, you use the filter five times and it's, yeah, it's still coffee, but it's more watery okay. coffee. And I was like, I, five drops is not the same. Five drops of the first cup of coffee is not the same as the fifth time you use the filter. That's not the same thing. So right, I was right. like, for us to all be on the same protocol, I want us to be consistent in what we're using and not have five people using five different brands of different. oil. Yes, and I have exactly. to adjust my advice. And I have no idea what to tell you to do now. Yep. 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 I agree. Yeah. I agree. So, well, let's see. I was just looking at the slides again. <laughs> we get through. Yeah, that's yeah, it. We that's did. Really, that was a great. We ran. No, because when I ran through them all by myself, I made like one little thing. It was only like there's 20 slides. It was 20 minutes. I spent a minute on each slide. But you and I kind of mm -hmm. went off into a whole different thing. That's not the, you know, uh, <laughs> a I whole know. trauma. We went off into a whole trauma yeah. talk. Well, yeah, I think it's important. I think a lot of people don't realize mm -mm. that that how much of an impact that has on them right. you know i i, I th you know i think about that some people don't realize that the past trauma can affect them that way so it's it's good to talk about because i think it's not a common conversation either it's very so, uncommon it's an incredibly yeah. uncommon like i said people will tell me that for the first time and they have a mother and friends and a pastor and 10 other doctors and i'm like and this is the you know so like i said i know it's something that people kind of keep to themselves Right. And, you know, they're not going to really necessarily connect other things. They'll be like, oh, I have a husband. He's really nice. He's good looking. And, you know, what's going on with how I feel? And I'm like, well, let's dig. Let's go backwards. It, it's yeah. all connected. And yeah. we don't think so, but it, it is all connected. And like I said, if they can say that or discuss it with him or know to even know to get therapy some people don't even know I'm like you know maybe you want to talk to somebody more than just me and more than once that might be important 